How's it going Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you how to fix an auger worm gear on a snowblower. So let's get right into it. So we got this snowblower here. It's a Craftsman, 9 horsepower, 24 inch. And my buddy brought it over saying that uh, he had an issue where his front stage auger wasn't spinning. So the first stage is up here and the second stage is in there. This thing runs perfect though. He fired it up and he engaged the handle at the back there and his second stage spins but the first stage up here wasn't spinning. Uh, every now and then it would spin and then it would kind of go like every now and then, right? So it would be uh, intermittent but uh, there's no way you could blow snow with this thing because uh, it just wasn't moving. So we ended up taking a look at the shear pins and these were the two that were in there. Now this one you guys can see is completely bent and I believe that these shear pins, uh, they're thicker and they're meant for a larger snowblower. So I don't think these ones are actually meant for uh, this model because that is bent and they're supposed to shear. So you can see that these shear pins here, uh, they didn't shear. And uh, what that meant was that the force from the auger was transferred into the differential right in here. And uh, there's a gear in there and then there's a worm gear that comes off of the shaft that goes back towards your pulley uh, at the back of you know the front of this uh, housing here. Now the thing is normally when your shear pins shear and because we have the shear pins out of these right now you guys can see these things spin freely and uh, basically that's what's supposed to happen so if you hit something those shear pins are supposed to shear just like they're named so basically what happens is uh, your machine at the back is still spinning uh, and the shaft here is still spinning on the inside of that axle, but this is freewheeling so that, you know, if there's a big chunk of ice in here or something, it doesn't transfer that force through your differential here. So basically, shear pins are just there to protect from uh, damaging anything. Now, shear pins come in all different shapes and sizes. You guys can see some of them are a bit thicker and some of them are a bit thinner like this. And then they got these little grooves in them. So this goes into the middle of the shaft and then this is what sticks out at one end and that's what sticks out at another. So if you do hit something, they shear at these spots so that again, your machine doesn't damage any uh, internal components. Um, now I believe that this machine, because it's only just a, a little one, even though it's a nine horse, it's only a 24 inch, I believe it's supposed to have something like this, uh, smaller, not big thick ones like this. Normally this is something you'd see on like a, you know, a 10 and a half, 30, or uh, 10 and a half, 32, something a lot bigger. So there's a little cap here that you can take off and uh, that just uh, gives you a chance to look inside of the machine. That's where you're gonna put your uh, grease when you do grease this thing up. But uh, you guys can see that uh, this differential, it's got a bunch of bolts on it here and basically we can just split this thing apart and have a look inside of it. But what I did was uh, I just opened that up and you could tell there was a, a bunch of metal shavings coming out from in there. To get this off, we're gonna have to take these off right here, right? Because you have to split this and unfortunately these right here are in the way. And to do that, we're gonna have to take the end bushings off of both sides of this. But to be able to pull it out to actually get access at that, we're going to have to split this machine. He also has some damage on uh, the front ends of this thing. So we can look and see that uh, this fin from our auger blades here is almost hitting the auger housing, which is not good. So we're gonna have to uh, bend that out and fix that up. And coming over to the right side here, we can see that uh, this side is just basically about the same. Uh, the blades from the auger here impeller uh, on the first stage are basically almost hitting the auger here. So uh, this side, uh, you could tell that the skitter plate here is just completely mangled. There's hardly anything left on this bottom side. And he did say that uh, it was pulling to one side. So we're going to have to uh, bend that out, reshape it a little bit, and then uh, see if we can either replace the skid plate or maybe uh, weld something up so that, uh, you know, he actually has a skid plate on there. But to be able to pull the internals from this auger assembly out of the auger housing right here, we're going to have to split the front and the back of the unit. So the first thing we're gonna do is come down here and we're going to pull out the cotter pin. So we're just gonna pull this pin out here so that we can disconnect this. And then we're gonna go ahead and undo these two bolts right here and the two bolts on the right side as well. And when you do go ahead to split this machine, the back half of your machine is gonna fall backwards. So I suggest having a chair so that you can uh, kind of position it and hold it up a little bit. Okay, so we got our chute rotator here disconnected and we have our bolts on the left side out now. 
but what we have to do is disconnect the belt just from the top engine pulley there. So you could try to pull it out or you could just go ahead and remove your belt keeper there and then just pull it off of the pulley and then we should be ready to drop the back half of this machine down. Okay, so once you have the belt and the four bolts from the top there separated, you can go ahead and loosen off the bolts at the bottom here. Now you don't have to take them off completely because there are slots in the bottom of this so you should be able to just loosen them off and then you should be able to just lift this out at a 45 degree angle and pull it right out but you can go ahead and take the bolts right out if you want and then we can go ahead and separate this machine okay so now that we got our machine separated we have just the front end auger and we're gonna have to remove this pulley from the shaft now normally they have a bolt here so what you'll do is remove your bolt and then sometimes they'll have holes where you can put a flywheel puller on them and because this pulley doesn't have a bolt at the end it has two locking bolts right there so you guys are going to need to loosen that off and then I've hit this with a little bit of lubricant so we should be able to pull that pulley straight off because you have to remember that we're removing our shaft right the entire piece and we can't do that with the pulley on so the pulley has to come off and then we should be able to pull it right out and now that those two locking bolts are off we should be able to just pull this pulley right off like that so the lubricant definitely helped there but now we have access at our bearing here this is our auger bearing now that we have the pulley off you're gonna to want to go ahead and grab your key just so we don't lose that so go ahead and put that in your parts tray and now we have access at our auger bearing now if you guys want to see me replace one of these you can click the link at the top right of your screen it should be popping up you can check that out we did that on a 10 horse 30 inch snow blower now depending on the condition of the shaft you might have it really rusted where the pulley is on there pretty tough you know so uh, again I uh, highly recommend using some lubricant and once your pulley is off you could take a little bit of emery cloth just to clean it up so that the bearing slides off nice and easy and just be aware that on this model there's a little collar here that goes underneath the pulley and before the bearing now once you get to this part you don't necessarily have to remove the bearing and the bearing retainer this piece here is the bearing retainer and uh, this is the bearing inside of there so you can see it's got a little bit of rubber coating there and then the metal to the metal shaft so to make this easier, we can try to remove the shaft without removing the bearing because sometimes when you go to loosen off these nuts, uh, the studs can snap and then you're going to have to replace it or you'll go to loosen off the nut and the bolt on the inside, which normally they're welded on a lot of them, but sometimes they're not. Uh, they can just spin freely and then you have to get an extension with a socket and then hold that while you take those off. So right now I'm going to leave this for now just to see if we can uh, loosen off the ends at the front and then we'll try to pull this out leaving the bearing where it is for now. Okay now I'm going to be removing these bolts using a half inch wrench to hold the nut on the inside. And we're going to do that for all three on this side and three on the other side as well. You guys can see the auger's already starting to drop. Okay, so I got that side undone. I just wanted to show you here quickly because I know that I showed you, uh, you know, how this was kind of caved in on the auger. But because the auger is caved in, you guys can see that this bushing here, look how much of an angle that's on. So that could be also adding to a little bit extra resistance on the axle. So like I said, once I get this differential taken care of with the worm gear fixed and I know that when I turn the shaft at the back that uh, this rotates, then we can go ahead and uh, align all of this. So again, same thing on this side, remove these bolts and then we'll go ahead and try to pull this whole piece out of the auger housing. And to get those off, I'm just going to be using a rigid gun with a half inch long socket and a half inch wrench. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's see if we can get this auger out of the housing without having to take that bearing off. It looks like we can. Okay, so now that we have the auger and the whole impeller out of the auger housing, we can go ahead and take off our impellers and just give your bushings a little inspection. We can see that there's a little crack at the bottom of this corner, probably because somebody tightened them up too much. We can see that actually all corners are cracked, but uh, this thing should still hold up and there is no real out of round, which would be like, you know, the bottom because obviously gravity pulls down one way. So you just want to make sure that these things are uh, fairly circular and uh, you can see that it's kind of oblonged, but it's not that bad. Okay, so the left impeller pulled off nice and easy. This one, not so much because we got a little burr in there. So I'm going to have to go ahead 
and hit that with a little bit of lubricant and using a vice grip with a little bit of Gorilla Tape on the ends because I don't want to just completely gnarl that shaft. I was able to uh, hold that side while I rotated the impeller on the right side and pull it off. So now again those will go on their corresponding sides and we'll take this up to the workbench and have a look at uh, the inside of this gearbox here. And just so I can get a shot of this, the reason that we're doing this is because when you turn your second stage impeller, you guys can see the shaft here is spinning, but our shafts at the front are not. Okay, so we got our auger here up on the workbench and basically this thing's pretty straightforward. It's got all these bolts all the way around this thing. Again, that one is uh, for your grease access. So we're just gonna go ahead and start loosening off all of these bolts and then once you get those bolts loose we're going to get a putty knife and we're going to go in here and split this gasket all the way around now depending on how you pull this apart you might be able to salvage that gasket you might not be able to again you want to use the right thickness gasket and uh, as always part numbers will be in the description down below Okay, so I got all seven bolts off now, and our casing here is already starting to split itself. I didn't really even have to uh, take the putty knife in there. So what I'm going to do is separate these two halves, and we'll get a better look at the worm gear. Okay, so just by pulling the hosing apart, I was able to take it off of the drive shaft here, and we can see that the worm gear looks to be okay. So if our worm gear is in good condition, then by a process of elimination, it must be our ring gear. So let's rotate this and see what it looks like. We can see that all the teeth are there. And then we get to here, check it out. Completely ground off. So something happened here where he hit something. And like I said, this is why you want to run the proper shear bolts. So there's all the teeth off the gear there. You can see a bunch of teeth there and then nothing, guys. So again, the first way that we really diagnosed this was just uh, taking the plug where you have grease access off and we put a rag inside of it and then we pulled the rag out. And by doing that, you just get a chance to look at if there's any metal shavings inside of here. So what I'm going to do now is pull this piece off, pull this piece off so that we have this on the workbench alone and then I can kind of take the other shaft here with uh, the second stage and the drive shaft and just move that off to the side because this is all we need to work on right now. Now off of the right side here I've just taken this just to have a inspection of the gasket and believe it or not the gasket looks to be intact. Sometimes they rip, this time it didn't so I should be able to save that gasket and save myself and my customer Oh, I'd say 20, 25 bucks, depending on how much that was. So here's a little better shot of uh, the gear. So that's what your gear is supposed to look like, kind of. And then you guys can see there, just completely gnarled off all the teeth on that. So no good. And uh, now I'm gonna have to go in here and clean up all those little brass bits. Because again, once I put a new gear in here, I don't want this thing to pick up a burr or have a you know chunk of metal in there and then uh, you know cause a problem down the road. So I have to order this gear and then uh, I'm just going to inspect the worm gear over here just make sure that it's okay. It looks to be in good condition. From what I can tell there's no chunks missing out of it which is a good sign. So again save the customer a little bit of money. So I'm going to have to get a part number off of that and I'll show you guys how to do that. So on the back half of this machine here you guys are going to see a sticker somewhere on the access panel at the back and you're gonna want that model number right at the top. So this is a C950 uh, 52809-0. And you can also grab that serial number two, but there's all your numbers just for reference. So I'm gonna take that model number and I'm gonna type it into Google and you should see something like this come up. What you don't want is an owner's manual. You want either a parts diagram or a service manual. So you should see something like this come up and then once you have that, you'll be able to scroll down, see the gear, 
and then you'll be able to uh, get a part number. And then once you have a part number, you'll be able to order the part. And once again, guys, part numbers are always in the description down below. So I'll have to go and order that part. And once it comes in, I'll bring you guys back. Well, that's it for part one. I'm going to be splitting this video up into two parts. If I didn't, it probably would have run a little bit on the long side. But if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch part two once that's uploaded. I upload new videos every week, so be sure to come back next week. Check the channel out for what we got. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.